You're watching Influence Me Wednesday with Morale All Things Hair. Hello, my name is Morale O'Kane and it is the Hair Debate. Okay, the segment of What's Up Doc here at the home of Dr. Nikki Hill Soka Center. And so, yes, 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 Dr. Hill, how are you today? I'm good, how are you doing? I am doing great in our topic. You definitely want to share and invite because it's going to be very informative. Okay, what we're discussing today is lupus. Okay, a condition that millions of individuals are dealing with today mm -hmm. in this day and time. And so um, they actually just, the foundation, the chapter here in Atlanta, um, and, and definitely we would tag them in the post because they're raising the awareness and raising money um, to the research and everything that is going on for lupus. And so, Dr. Hill, now, can you share to us what lupus is? Absolutely. So, lupus is an autoimmune condition, mm -hmm. and it's where the immune cells start ha actually developing antibodies and, and attacking certain organs or mm -hmm. certain skin um, on the body. And so, it, lupus can be systemic or it can affect just the skin solely, but there's a lot of different types of lupus. And I think um, that's um, some information that's not very commonly known because yes. uh, we all know or have experienced someone who may have systemic lupus, but there are other forms of lupus that just affect the skin as well. Oh, wow. And so now, um, so when you talk about systemic lupus, you know, and that's affecting the organs, the vital organs and the kidneys. And so because we know that you know, hair loss, the, the care of hair, you know, derives from what, you know, goes on inside of the body. Absolutely. So with with any kind of chronic condition, mm -hmm. um, there's something called anemia of chronic disease um, in which the individual can start to developing anemia because if you imagine the immune cells are always on 10, they're always going yes. and that requires a lot of metabolism, a lot of energy. Um, and so those, those red blood cells may start to um, not be able to carry as much oxygenated blood as usual. And so you start to have anemia. And anemia is one of those triggers that can actually lead to shedding. So in patients who have lupus, um, especially if it's been long term, and sometimes mm -hmm. even in the beginning, early stages, we may actually see some hair changes or scalp changes because that is skin. Um, so we may see some scalp changes that lead to hair loss or they may have excessive shedding with lupus. Yes, and so now, and we don't want to scare individuals, you know, if you experiencing shedding, some hair loss, we don't want you running to Google, Dr. Google, and, and YouTube, you know, trying to diagnose yourself because, again, you definitely, definitely need to seek the advice of a former professional, you know, and so when, it, when you start experiencing, though, now you've been diagnosed, and so now you're experiencing the hair loss. Um, what are some things, you know, from a professional such as yourself, Dr. Nikki, from a dermatologist that can be done? So, like you said, the first important thing is to make sure you have a diagnosis. So always have your arsenal and your army of providers to help you. So your dermatologist, your rheumatologist, your primary care doctors on the medical side are really important. Yes. Um, dermatology, the way we, a lot of times we diagnose lupus is we'll do biop skin biopsies, but we have to send them for special tests. Um, we can also work with our rheumatologists and our primary care doctors um, yes. to actually do blood tests that can help with, with diagnosing certain um, types of lupus. Lupus and a lot of other autoimmune conditions, sometimes they can be very stubborn to produce a, a real, okay. like true diagnosis until we actually see something on the skin that we can biopsy. And so sometimes even that first round of blood tests or that first biopsy may not be um, completely specific. So that's why it's really good to also make sure the individual understands clinically what they're looking at and, listen yes. and they hear your story and listen to your symptoms so they can kind of come to a good understanding of what's going on. Um, when it comes to um, you know exactly what's happening with the hair and they're experiencing hair shedding, what we have to do is make sure that that lupus is controlled. So there are different types of medicines and treatment regimens um, that we can do to really try to get that inflammation, get that immune system to calm back down. Um, so that way we can calm down the anemia of chronic disease, we can make sure this, the kidneys are healthy, we can make sure the organs are healthy. You know, we talk a lot about sun protection because yes. in certain types of lupus, sun can actually flare their, oh, wow. their lupus um, even if they are controlled. Um, sun is a trigger. And so we really make sure they have their, they're wearing their sunscreens on a daily basis, at least SPF 30, mm -hmm. typically higher for my patients with lupus. Um, so that way we can protect them from the sun, make sure we're not increasing those triggers because that can lead to more hair shedding and hair loss. 
Now, when it comes to the hair changes, in the beginning of, um, or any time during lupus, there's something called lupus hairs. And again, this is not something you want to diagnose on your own. So you <laughs> definitely want to make sure you have your dermatologist that understands lupus um, to assess the, the hair and also make sure assessing you in general. But you can have little short fine hairs along the frontal hairline called lupus hairs. Excuse me. The other thing that can happen is hairs can start to shed a little bit yes. more aggressively. Just feel there's a lot of change in the body going on. Um, and so when we have treatments on board to help with the lupus, that can self-correct. But if it's a little bit more aggressive than we anticipate, then sometimes we can add in other treatments or other modalities like PRP to really help shut down that shedding process. And then the last thing is, uh, is if there's scalp changes, because scalp mm -hmm. is, you know, we said scalp is skin. So if there's scalp lesions or scalp rashes, we need to stop that and, and calm those down because all that um, activity in that rash on the scalp or that lesion on the scalp can definitely lead to hair loss and it can be permanent if it's allowed to be there for a long time. And you definitely stated some things, Dr. Nikki, that I wanted to touch, you know, from the basis of, like you said, to calm those that down, you know, mm -hmm. and so now, but now that would continue. That's on a regimen. You basically have them on a regimen, and you have to stick with that regimen. Um, so many times we start a regimen, we see some improvement, and then we want to say, "Well, I, <laughs> you know, well, okay, I see a change because the hair is important. That's one of the things that they want to correct, and they see a little change. It's like, okay, well, let me, you know." I can see Dr. Nikki, you know, the following month, you know, or, you, but understand that it's a team effort in controlling these different symptoms that you're going through um, to get in the results that you're looking for. And, and because we all want to make sure that at the end of the day, you know, your health is our concern, your well being. And again, because hair is important. Um, we just want to make sure that, you know, you you are being attentive of the other things that are going on with your body. Absolutely. I always say um, certain conditions, there's just almost like a genetic stamp that's there. Yes. And so what we're doing is trying to control everything and keep things quiet. It's kind of like when people have a little touch of diabetes, so say they got the sugars. <laughs> When you take your medicine or when you have the blood pressure, yes. you take your medicine, everything's good. And they say, well, my numbers are good. I feel good. Let me stop Absolutely. taking the medicine. But unless you're, and it's different than blood pressure or diabetes where you can yes. do diet and exercise and you can reverse that and take your body out of that situation. With lupus, it is a little bit of a genetic stamp there. So you take mm -hmm. your medicine so that we can keep your body healthy, keep your organs healthy, keep yes. that inflammation from attacking them. So that way you can, you know, maintain your, your status of health. And so when individuals feel better, that's a good sign, but it should not be a sign in lupus to stop your medicine. Absolutely. Okay, so the medication, um, you know, we a lot of times know that the illnesses has used some effect on the hair, but what about the medication? My stylist, my barbers, my cosmetologist, and kind of let them know and have a, a, a good comprehensive approach to treating the hair. Because then, and I may have to tell the stylist um, or the cosmetologist, there's some medicines this individual's going on, it's gonna cause either oily scalp or it's going to cause dry hair or it's going to cause some changes or you may have to work with the with your client and find you know alternative styles or protective styles or camouflaging techniques for them during this process and so now with the dryness of the hair um and some of the other things that dr nikki just stated you know um as professionals as hair care providers understanding the fact that we work in partnership with um the dermatologist and, um, and communication is everything. So that consultation is very important. Um, never, never, you know, um, not communicate with your hair care provider and what's going on with you and your diagnosis. Keep, you know, um, you know, make sure that as the progression, as the changes of medication or whatever it may be, that that is communicated with the hair care provider. So that way the strategy, because it, the strategy may not just be one set strategy, you may have to kind of alternate that. And so when it pertains to like the dryness and whatnot, there are treatments that can be done in the salon that can assist the dermatologist. 
you know, um, in what she is doing as well as getting give, getting you the results that you need. Absolutely. And so I tell you, this has been very <laughs> informative, Dr. Nikki. I thank you so much. Now, Absolutely. where can our viewers out there get more information regarding what you're doing, your practice, and how to get in touch with you? Absolutely. So I'm the owner and the dermatologist at Skin Culture and Hair Center. We're located in Tucker, Georgia. And if you or you know someone who's suffering from hair loss wants to be seen, um, you can always call the office at 404-474-2301. Or you can schedule an appointment online at socacenter.com, S-O-C-A-H, center.com. And then you can follow me on Instagram at Dr. Nikki Hill. Yes, yes, yes. And thank you so much, Dr. Nikki. My name is Morello Kane. Um, to get more information on what we're doing here at the Hair Debate, Okay, go to morellallthingshair.media. And again, this has been our segment of for um, What's Up Doc with Dr. Nikki Hill. Do tune in to us. Um, we tune in every first Wednesday of the month with a topic that's going to definitely educate and keep you aware of what's going on in the medical industry. And we're connecting the healthcare with the hair care industry. Okay, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Um, morellallthingshair.media. Instagram, Facebook, stay tuned to the Hair Debate, where we debate, debunk, and discover all things hair.